Uh, turn with me today to uh, Psalms 31. Psalms 31. Uh, the title of my sermon today is Fall Back and Trust God. Fall Back and Trust God. So uh, today we will read Psalms 31. So if you have your Bible, uh, viewers online, turn to Psalms 31. And in verse 1, uh, the Word of God reads, In Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in Thy righteousness. Bow down Thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be Thou my rock, my strong rock, excuse me, for an house of defense to save me. For Thou art my rock and my fortress, Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Verse 4. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. And jump with me to verse 19 here. Verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath shewed me this marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully reward the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Uh, we'll open up with the word of prayer. Uh, God, my Father, please forgive me of my sins, Lord God. And if I've held any iniquity in my heart, Lord God, wash it away with your most holy blood. Thank you for salvation in your Son, Jesus Christ. Without you, Lord, I am nothing. And still here today, I am but a sinner saved by grace, God. Um, you know, I get so nervous sometimes being behind this pulpit. Uh, you know, you've had some great men stand on this pulpit. So fill me with uh, the Holy Spirit power, Lord God. And... and Put put Robert aside. Put Robert behind the cross, Lord God, that they only see the cross right. here and that, that your words will be here to uh, convict the hearts of sinners and uh, exhort the brethren and uh, most importantly that uh, Jesus Christ will be exalted and that uh, your word will not return void as the brother encouraged me here before the sermon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, preacher. All right. All right. So my first point today will be... Complete trust in the Word of God. You can trust God to keep His Word. That's good. You can trust God to keep His Word. So look here in uh, verse 1, right? In Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in Thy righteousness, right? Deliver me in Thy righteousness. So uh, we know here this is, uh, this is David, uh, you know, being the psalmist. Uh, so in the Old Testament... Uh, you know, they didn't have uh, God's, uh, uh, you know, imputed righteousness. So here, uh, in the end of this, deliver me in thy righteousness. This is more of an appeal to uh, God's own nature, appealing to God's nature of righteousness, that he is a, a, a just and righteous God who will uh, judge sin, right? So that is more of the uh, appeal that uh, David is making here in this moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I love this, right, because... Uh, in Thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Yeah. The Lord is always giving us uh, things that He can, uh, uh, things that we can trust in. Right? You know, uh, throughout the whole Bible, it's prophecy, the Psalms. If you were to take, uh, if you were to take, uh, uh, you know, a, a piece of paper, you'd need a whole notebook, probably even more than that, going through uh, just the Book of Psalms and identifying all the prophecy in there. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it's funny how uh, atheists and people who are against the Bible they'll discard it as pro, as uh, you know, poetry and stuff. Like you can't trust that. That's poetry. No, no, no. First uh, Timothy three three sixteen. Right. Uh, it is profitable for doctrine first. It is not profitable for 
poetry or these other things. First and foremost, it is for doctrine, right? You look in there, and there's some beautiful doctrine in there, right? So, uh, and, 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 like, I, I love reading the Old Testament, right? Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. And, and, and even when he comes out and he says, thus saith the Lord, he'll even say, and then, and then the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, uh, you know, go into the people of Israel and say, thus saith the Lord. You know, that's how, we, that's how I know when I read that, like, oh, this is the word of God, because he's even giving them the, the go here, do this, and say this. There is no need for other interpretation to be added onto it, because he's giving you the whole entire, the whole entire story. I just read this in Leviticus 10, 11. I just read this in Leviticus 10, 11. You don't turn there for time, but uh, in Leviticus 10, 11, it says, uh, the Lord hath spoken these things by the hand of Moses. Oh, bless God. Bless God. He spoke these things by the hand of Moses. How much more beautiful is that? And we can trust everything that the Lord has said from beginning to end, right? And, and, and my favorite, right? Let God be true in every man a liar, right? We can trust every single thing that's had in there. Even when he uses a man to do that, right? We, we, we can trust. Uh, I may not trust Mac, but I wrote this sermon on a Macintosh computer, right? And, and, and you can't trust me, but you could trust that I prayed unto the Lord that He would show me exactly what you need to ha what you need to hear tonight, right? And uh, you know, if we were even to just spend a, a fraction of the time to to search after God, right? As as we may spend on, um, you know, c the computer, the phone, the work, all these other things we do, you know. Uh, imagine that we all, we we always marvel at the missionaries' letters and stuff, right? Because they're they're so eloquent in how they speak about the Lord, and we we got to remember how much time are they really spending all day on the Lord? I heard a preacher say, you know, how much of your percentage? Uh, in fact, this is Pastor Kim, right? How 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 much percent of your day really pleases the Lord? You know, and I'm sure most of us who who are here blessed, we, we don't please Him very much. But those on the missionary field, those who are out uh, doing the Lord's battles, right? So much more, so much more so, and, and that all of that just builds. Builds more of a trust. In fraternity, we do a trust fall, right? We do a trust fall, but we don't do this until like week four after you've been hanging out with these guys for like four or five weeks, right? And then you know, okay, I could trust these guys. When they tell me to fall back and I'm blindfolded, I could trust these guys. If you spend four or five weeks with this Bible, you should more than be willing to to fall back onto the salvation of Jesus Christ, right? And, and, and that's what, and, and I understand here, that's not exactly what uh, David was talking about doctrinally, but, but practically, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Don't miss out on salvation because you are a good person, because you want to stand in your own clothing at the, at the great white throne. According to this Bible, which I just proved, that, which I just showed you, if you'll just put a little bit of time, you could trust it. According to the Bible, all of your righteousness in that day will be as filthy rag you will be covered in the filth that is your sin you hate you hate standing around people that are prideful right you could feel that pride you could feel the stench of that or or when you're walking maybe if you're if you're uh, in the in uh, you know the the mall or something and you could sense those bad people you could sense that filth around you how much more so when it's manifested onto you as your clothing how why would you take that risk why would you ever put yourself in that situation why not just fall back into the raiment that is Jesus Christ let him clothe you let him let him cover you and that be that it be all that is, is around you at that day at that moment that's going to be the only thing that matters that's going to be the only thing that matters my second point is you can trust God to help you verse 2 bow down thine ear to me deliver me speedily be thou my strong rock for in house of defense to save me. And here David, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he uses uh, anthropomorphic, uh, anth anthropomorphic statement, right? So that's just a, a fancy way of saying, uh, right? He uses man's language to speak with uh, God, right? And, and likewise, God uses uh, man's language to deal with, uh, you know, man. Hence why we have a book we can read, right? Right? That, hence why we have a book we could read. And he says, bow down thine ear to me. As if God the Father, right, could really just lean down and say, yes, yes, my son, I, I, I want to hear you, right? And, and he'll, he will make that big, ascent, uh, you know, descent from the third heaven down to where we are, right? He will make more of that. We're, we're doing maybe 1% of the effort there. Think about this. Think about the implications of that statement. You're here and you're talking to someone who's light years and light years and light years away. Bow down thine ear to me. And 
and deliver me speedily. Not only is he going to come all the way down so he could hear that prayer, but he's going to save you quickly. Uh, I understand that I understand that we are in the church age and a lot of the things we pray for uh, do not always come so quickly. Uh, sometimes we ask for to be delivered of these things, right? But but that's one of those things. That, again, if you just read your Bible more, you'll see all the suffering we go through. It's so he could give us more rewards. He's just trying to bank us out when we get there. Of course, he's not going to save you because he's saying you're losing money, kid. You're losing money. I'm trying to give you some gold. Stick in the fight. Stick in the fight. That's all we got to do. Right. And, and God, he does this back again. Jeremiah 16, 17. Don't don't turn there. But uh, right. Uh, it, it, it grieved him at his heart. Genesis 6, 6. Uh, Mine eyes are upon their ways. Right. So God is just using those those things to just show you. Right. To, so you can understand deeper on what he's fe feeling as he's seeing. Uh, 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 maybe he does have eyes, but I don't know. Right. Uh, and, and he's he's watching us. Right. Sometimes the simplest statements are the ones that, that really will, you know, hit home. Sometimes you want to you want to you want to sin. I'm going to be frank. Right. Sometimes we want to sin. But then you think about his eyes were upon our ways. His eyes were upon our ways, man. Like you, you got to think about, man. Like uh, I, I heard a preacher once say, "Imagine when we get up to heaven, Jesus is still. He's gonna have the hand, He's gonna have the hole in the hands, right? We would imagine that He's gonna, because that's what Thomas went through, right? But imagine if He's as marred as He was on, on, on the cross, and you're gonna have to look at Him, you know, and like." His eyes are on you, you know, his eyes that are probably still slightly bulging out. Because if you've ever seen a man get hit, when he gets hit, his face puffs up, everything comes, it's coming out, you know. And he looks bad and he's still watching you with those bruised eyes, with those bloody eyes, maybe a, a pop blood vessel. And those eyes are watching you. And, and you know, if, if it's hard for you to sin when just your parent or someone is on you, why is it so? Why is it easy for you to sin when when a a, a dead man? Uh, 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 he's risen, yeah, right. But but a man who died for you yeah. is watching you, yeah. and he's just looking at you. How how much easier is it for sin? But still, but still, right? He still wants to come all the way down to hear you, Thank you. to hear those points, right? And, and and once we're comforted, right? Once we're comforted uh, in hearing, right? In hearing the way that he uh, he you know delivers this to us right right what's the next statement bow down and deliver me speedily be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me right right after deliver me speedily he gives you two ways that he's going to save you two ways that he, and you go into verse three as well for thou art my rock and my fortress right so here three ways that he's going to save you right so first of all right as a house of defense atop a strong rock right right be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For an house of defense to save me. So picture this, right? A giant mountain, right? A rocky mountain. And atop this big rocky mountain, there stands your fortress, right? There stands your, your, your defense, right? So you're protected from attacks, right? Because people, how are they climbing up these rocky hills, right? If they're coming up these rocky hills, you could see them, right? And you're atop the highest rock, right? You're atop the highest rock. So every, it's triple layers of defense. You got the high, rock high atop, you got the rocks to get to you, and you got your walls, right? And you got your walls. You got three layers of defense there, right? Three layers of defense, and uh, the, the next one, right? Uh, for thou art my rock. For thou art my rock, right? And uh, De Deuteronomy uh, 32.4, right, shows us that... Uh, here, I'll, I'll read this to you. Deuteronomy 32.4, in case you've never read this. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. So this rock is like a spiritual foundation for us to be upheld in. You could be in your, you could be in your rocky defense, right? Safe from the attacks, knowing all these things. And still sometimes, uh, we know it in Christian life, when you're safe from everything, you're still going to find a way to go outside those gates and get shot with an arrow, right? So once you're already in that defense, you need to take the, the fourth, really, but we'll call it the second layer of defense, which is standing in that spiritual stronghold, which is your rock, which we just read is God and Jesus Christ. You need to stand in that foundation. And, and, and once again, that goes back to one of those things, right? If you'll just read your Bible and understand more about who this man is, you can uh, understand deeper. We'll turn here real quickly. Uh, Luke 6, 48. Luke 6, 48. And, and some of you may be um, 
You may be, uh, you know, aware of this verse already, but I've always liked this one. Luke chapter 6 and verse 48. Luke chapter 6 and verse 48. He is like a man which built in house and dig deep and laid the foundations on a rock. And when the flood arose, the, steam, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock, right? So when the waves start hitting hard, when life starts hitting hard, if you're grounded in something that you know you can trust, yeah. that you know has already paid the price for, right? How much easier is it to, to, to not want to do something when you already know, hey, I'm getting paid up in heaven. Hey, hey, I got eternal life already, you know? I never understood that, that whole, you know, peace when, when you're going through struggle and all that. I never understood that until I really got saved. And I was like, man, you know, I, I think that's why the Lord lets everything just, all the floodwaters hit, right? Right when you get saved, right? Because you're, you're already there. You just got to Calvary. Yeah. You're like, man, you know, my feet are like good in this mud right here. And then, right? <laughs> and then everything starts hitting. But you're right there. You're so close to Jesus at that point. It, it doesn't, it, it gives you that example of the peace within, right? It gives you that example of oh wow I could stay here I could stay here although we always do stray away from the cross we do stray away from thinking about Jesus Christ the the author and finisher of our faith we do stray away from from Calvary right constantly but if we go back there if we keep our eyes there if we continue to, to stand uh, uh, before Jesus Christ as our rock and stand in him as his body right I think that's why it's so beautiful where his body we're his body. We stand in him. Yes. We are. We are him. You know, he is our head above water. And even when we, when we are underwater drowning, if we will be in him, we're above water. We don't got nothing to worry about. We have nothing to worry about because we stand in someone who cannot go under the water. Someone who has paid the price. And that is Jesus Christ. And our third level of defense uh, here at Psalms 31, so turn back to Psalms 31, right? Our third layer of defense in verse 3 is, is a fortress, right? Psalms 31, verse 3, and the Word of God reads, For thou art my rock, my rock, and my fortress, my fortress. So now not only are you defended against attacks, but you are at spiritual high ground, Right, you are atop of a rock in your in your defense, standing on a strong spiritual rock, and now you have just taken over that whole rocky mountain, and now it is a fortress. Now it is not the walls up top, but it is the walls below. And maybe you're maybe you got a little village even further down, but you can look down on the enemy as they arise, and you are in a good spot to fire back at them. That is the hardest part. That is why many Christians do not win a battle. That is why we are told to run, because we don't make it to that third level of defense. Many of us are stuck trying to stand in Christ. And hey, I'm preaching to myself as well. It's hard to stand in Christ. I told the brother this. That is one of the hardest things to be constantly looking at Jesus Christ. That's one of the hardest things to do here. But if you will get past that second layer of defense, you can get a fortress. You can be prepared to fire back at the enemy when he comes. You can be ready to hold the fort. It doesn't say hold the building, hold the fort. And from what I know, forts may have several little buildings in there, and that sounds like a fortress to me. That sounds like something I could be prepared to stay in. And this is a long little life. I pray the Lord doesn't tarry too much longer because I'm tired of this wicked body. I'm, I'm tired of these freaking desires, right? But if he does, we got to be prepared to hold out. We aren't even seeing the persecution yet. We aren't even seeing any of this stuff that, that makes me, uh, that, that I feel like I'm reading as I read through, you know, the, the, the Pauline epistles or where he's talking about the things that they are facing. I feel like, hey, give me that some of the gold. Give me that opportunity, Lord, to make some money for you. Right. Not that we can inherit and be rich in heaven. Cool, cool, cool. But that I could give him a little piece of something back. Give him a little piece of a gold coin back and say, thank you for saving me. This is all I got for you. This is all I got for you. But hey, all hail Emmanuel. All hail Emmanuel. All the gold at him. I'll throw my shoes right now if I could, man. Gosh, man. And in a fortress, right? So after he comforts you by you by using your own language, by using your own examples, right? He gives you three layers of defense and that you can trust in, right? A Christian needs to be protected from attacks, but he also needs to be ready to fire some back, right? 
we work so hard to be KJV only, you know, right? It's, it's maybe if you don't go out very much, but if you go out, you know that uh, almost everyone, especially Christians, they're always attacking that KJV only standpoint. I just went soul winning with someone today, and I uh, blessed their souls. I had a great time with them. Uh, but um, they were not KJV only, and uh, we did not spend too much time on that topic because we both agreed that the gospel was more important. But they were questioning, man, they were questioning every single little thing, and they were trying to give me videos to watch and everything, right, to just get me off of believing in a perfect Bible, yeah. right, to get me off believing in a perfect Bible. And I strayed a little bit there, but uh, you need to be ready to fire some back. You need to be in your defense on a rocky mountain standing on the rock that is Jesus Christ and in a fortress and you can trust God to help you yes, sir. my third point is uh, you can trust God to lead guide and save lead guide and save and this is off of verse 3 and 4 so verse 3 in Psalms 31 says uh, for thou art my rock and my fortress therefore for thy name's sake Lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. For thou art my strength. So verse 3 here, right? Lead, right? For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for the namesake, lead me. Lead me, right? And this goes back to the whole point I'm just trying to hammer in here, right? If you'll just read your Bible, right? Uh, uh, so Psalms 34, 8, right? Taste and know that the Lord is gracious, right? Taste and know, right? And if you'll just read your Bible a little more, just a little, little more, right? Little, little, this is a funny little story, right? I was just, I was so excited that I, I upped my Bible reading chapters by one, right? And I went home and I talked to my grandmother and my grandmother was like, oh, mijo, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And then she's like, let me show you my, my, my daily reading, you know? My grandma reads one for each of her kids, for one, one for each of, and I, we got a big family. We're Mexicans, right? Um, one for each of our troubled family members, and then she does her daily reading on top of it. This woman reads 15 to 20 chapters a day, and she says if she gets more time, she just goes out and she just goes at it, you know? She just goes at it, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know? You know? But that, that's, that's what we should all strive to be. Whatever, whatever is your, your daily reading, if, even if it's one chapter, even if it's one page, whatever it is that you set as your, as your goal, right? As, if your heart's in it, right, God's going to gonna bless it, right? That's what we always say, right? You know, the, the cheerful giving, the cheerful giver, I know the context of it is money, right? But uh, it's also giving time, right? Especially in this day and age, right? It's always giving a little bit of time. And if you'll, uh, you know, just honor that, right, uh, and, and put in a little bit more uh, a plan to it, right? A plan and a purpose, right? Plan and a purpose to it, then you could get it going a little smoother and get God in it a little more, right? So lead, right? Read the Bible and learn about who Jesus Christ was, right? And, and see some of the examples of, of who this man really was. That way you could say, oh, these are some of the footsteps I should, I should walk in, right? I understand the Pauline epistles, right? And, and some of the Christian doctrine may be a little different from that. But, uh, you know, at the end of, day, at the end of the day, uh, even if you may not be 100% doctrinally sound, if someone was to come to you and say, man, that guy, that guy followed Christ. He followed Jesus Christ. I don't see that as a necessarily a, a bad thing at all. And maybe I'm wrong for that, but, but hey, if someone came up to me and was like, oh, you're wrong in this, but hey, at least you follow Jesus Christ. That is the biggest blessing. Uh, that would be one of the biggest blessings I think anyone could hear, right? And, and that comes from just knowing the man, right? You can't try to be like the man if you don't know anything the man's ever done, right? And that's kind of common sense. But people will, people will try to say, oh, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. But they, they, they don't know any of the stories about what the man did, you know? They don't know anything about what this man truly ever did. And so if you'll just read a little bit more, search the paths that he's already laid out for us in his word, right? If you were to just see some of the things he prayed for, some of the things that he valued, right? Some of the charity that, that he displayed, right? The, 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 praying, the praying for of the Holy Spirit, right? All these little things, right? Then you can be more like him and you could get, right? And you could be led by him, right? After he's already uh, defended you and showed you the lines of defenses as, we, as he did in the, in the last verses, right? After you've gotten all the defense ready, right? Now when you venture out of your fortress, you need to know what paths to walk on. That's 
yes, right? Brother. You need to know what paths to walk on, right? If you're, if you're going to fall back and trust on this man, on this man, Jesus Christ, who died for all of our sins, right? If you're going to trust in this man, then you need to know his footsteps so you can walk through there, right? Think about, think about uh, right, World War II, these people going out in the minefields and things like this, going out in this place. If you didn't know exactly where your commander was going and you strayed off that path even a little bit, you could not only kill yourself and harm yourself, but you could harm those behind you. You could end up uh, alerting the enemy to the position and getting everyone, the whole squad killed, right? Just because you don't want to read a little bit, just because you don't want to watch a little bit, that's where his foot went. That's, that's where his foot, let me go there. Let me get, let me get right there, right? If, you, if we're not making those, those, those little, uh, you know, those little progressions, our own self, right? We're not going to be able to do it. So let the Lord lead you. Let the Lord lead you. And not, not only lead you, but let Him guide you, right? So, so not only is He in front, right? But you got the Holy Spirit right here. Hey, no, 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 no. Oh, left foot, left foot, right? Right, left, left foot, left foot, right? Now, and, and, and that comes from, right, also, just right, after you know what the Lord valued, pray for those things He valued. That's good right pray there. for those That's things, wisdom. right? Yeah. Pray for those things a little bit, right? Help thou mine unbelief. Help thou mine unbelief, right? Help me to do these things, right? Constantly refer back to the Word of God because this is our final authority, right? This is our final authority. Constantly referring back to this and having it to guide you in all truth, right? Praying for the guidance in all truth. I always tell that people when, when I meet people out, you know, uh, you know, don't just read the Bible because I read the Bible for a while before I uh, before it actually worked on me, right? Because when we all read the Bible, we're like, oh, I bet it's like this. And you read it. Oh, it's kind of like that, you know. No, get, uh, get, the, get the preconceived notions out. That's good. Have, have it clear. Have your head clear. Have your head clear. Pray to the Lord, hey, whatever it is in here you want me to know, whatever truth in here is you, you want me to see, show it to me. Show it to me. Guide me. Guide me. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to walk at all, Lord. I don't know, I don't know the path. Take me on the path. Take me on the path, right? And if you'll just go into it open-minded like that, oh, the Lord will show you so much. Yes, the Lord will show you so much. I am the truth, the way, and the life, right? Oh, man, he will show you that, the truth and the way, if you'll just pray and ask for it, and he will guide you, right? And not only will you guide you, but right, verse 4, right? Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Pull me out of the net that they have laid for me, right? And, and, and when you go out into the world, um, you may have right, uh, uh, your, your family, your coworkers, your friends, right? And they all place these little snares for you, right? Whether they know it or not, right? They place these little, oh, come out here, you know? Oh, oh let's do this, right? Oh, they, they tell that little joke, right? Or, or they, they say something that, that they know the old you on, would brother. react to, right? And, and, and I'm sure some of them, right, I'm sure some of them, bless their hearts, right, they don't mean to, right? But that's just more evidence, right, that there's someone else behind there trying to, hey, lay that, lay that, little, lay that little net. Lay that little net. Get that Christian's foot caught right there, right there. I don't know if you've ever uh, used a net, right, but when you go out fishing with nets, you can't have nothing on you. You can't have anything on you, right, because you, you get thrown in that net, right? Get caught on your button. Get caught on your button, you know? You, you got a ring on? Oh, there, there goes your marriage ring, right? You're getting beat up by your wife when you go home, right? Yeah. Hey, right? The, you you got, you got to be ready when you go into those things. You got to have nothing that's going to interfere, right, with, with that net. Because once that net gets on you, once that net goes there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to try to pull you in or it's going to pull something you got in there, right? We wonder why so many Christians fall into heresies and things like that. It's because they, they, they don't got it tied up loosely, right? They don't got it uh, They don't got it on the inside, stitched on the inside. Maybe they got, you know, a little, a little, uh, what would Jesus do bracelet, right? Or they got something like that, right? And, and, and then the net comes on them and they throw the net off. And yeah, sure, they got, the net, they got Satan's net off them, but he took the what would Jesus do bracelet. Now they don't know what Jesus would do. Now they don't know, they don't, now they don't know what path they would go on, right? And, right? I know it's, it's kind of a, a funny little example, right? But you gotta, I'm just saying that to, to make you think a little deeper about these things, right? The, 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 the Bible says, the Bible says, we just read, pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, right? Someone is out there laying nets for you to fall into, right? Someone is out there laying those nets, right? If we know anything about 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world hath done a good job in blinding them, blinding them. And why does he blind them, right? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? And if, and if you do not believe already, you're condemned, right? You're condemned already, right? And we know that Adam and Eve were tricked, 
we're tricked, right? And, and because of they tricked, right, become spiritually dead, right? So now you got all these ropes coming together, and that's a net. And that's a net, right? you got all these different things, and once you step in it a little bit, you get it. Uh, our foot's already into it. Before you're even saved in Jesus Christ, you're in a net of some kind. You're in, you're in your fraternity net. You're in your little New Age doctrine net. You're in your little yoga net to stay healthy. You're in your little, I don't eat pork, and it's just a choice of mine. But really, you know, my friend told me about it, and it's his own spiritual conviction. You're right, bringing all these other little things that it doesn't even matter. You're just bringing them into your life. You're just bringing bringing them in. You're putting one net on after another net after another net. I, I remember this, this movie I used to watch. It's a kind of stupid movie, but at one point this guy's, the guy's walking and someone throws a little tiny net at him. Maybe like a net this big. And he goes on his head and he's like, ah, ah, ah. And he, he goes on the floor and he, maybe you know a movie I'm talking about, but he goes on the floor and he ends up just laying there. I mean, cause, uh, that's how we are. That's how a lot of us Christians are a lot of the time, right? We get caught in a stupid, tiny little net. In a stupid, tiny little net. And we let it just choke us up, hold up our day all the day, hold up our Bible reading, get us to skip this day. Oh, I'm not going to pray 15 minutes. I'll pray five minutes. Oh, I know. I know I have this whole big, long list of prayer lists that people who need prayers Maybe some of them are homeless people. Maybe some of them are spiritually lost people. Maybe that some of them are, are Christians who are dying, Christians who are, who are suffering in your own church. I'm going to skip that prayer list today. I'm going to just, oh, pray for everyone at San Jose Bible Baptist. I'm going to pray for all the lost souls out there. What about the lost souls by name, huh? What about the lost souls by name? What about taking that few extra minutes to care that much for the people next to you, for the people who can't even make it to this room? What about caring for those people? There's a lot of people that would love to be here tonight. Love to be here. I have friends who said they were going to come tonight, and I know they needed to be here tonight. And after this, I pray that some of you during the prayer meeting would just listen to the other, everyone around us when we say, you know, can you pray for this person and take it seriously? Take it seriously. I felt so bad today. I met a woman that, that we had uh, met at Soul Winning, a woman named Elba, a, a homeless woman. And I forgot her name because I haven't been praying for her. That's disgusting. That's for my own self, right? And I called her Kathy, right? Who's Kathy, right? But that's what I'm talking about, right? It's because, right, sometimes you get a little spiritually, spiritually lazy, right? And you don't hit that whole list. You hit half of the list. And maybe those are the half you've been praying for for a year. What about the new people, right? You got to stay on it. You got to stay on it. Don't let those little nets catch you up. Don't let those little things throughout your day, your family life, your friends, your coworkers, all those little things catch you up. Don't let those nets come on to you. <sighs> I was going to touch on, you know, these like little religion posing as science and all this, but I just, I don't even got the breath for it right now. We'll go, we'll go, we'll definitely go on a whole big tangent if we go there, right? But, uh, and, and, and what else does it say in this verse, right? What else does it say here? Uh, Psalms 31, uh, 3, right? Psalms 31, 3. Before he tells you about, uh, you know, how he's going to lead you, he's going to guide you, he's going to save you from the net that, that's being laid there, right? Because he's already defended you, and he's telling you, okay, I'm going to protect you when you go out of the fortress from now on. Those are the next set of instructions, right? The next set of instructions here. But before he tells you that set of instructions, he says, for for my name's sake, right? But it's really for thy name's sake, but because that's David talking about God, right? And why does he do this? He does this for for his own name's sake. I'm, uh, and this is how the whole verse starts. It's how the whole chapter starts off, right? Because uh, David is making an appeal unto God's righteous nature, right? He's making an appeal unto his nature, and that's the same thing here. For thy name's sake, right? Just as uh, 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 Moses, right, when, when, uh, when God's ready to destroy all of Israel, and he's like, yeah, let's just knock these people out, and I'll make you a stronger nation. Don't worry about it, right? And uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course, right? And then, uh, and then you know, Moses is like, you know, we, you know but, but you did this, and you've already saved Israel from, from Egypt, and, right, and they already know that you're out here with your people, right? But, and, and now if you turn and you do this, and, and you kill the people, will not the Egyptians say, oh, yeah, 
he just he brought them out and he could not save them the whole way. He couldn't do exactly what he was supposed to, right? And that will knock you down in their eyes, right? And, and, and that's why the God repented of that thing. He turned from, from that idea, right? And he, and he didn't actually do that for them. And that's the same type of thing here. We know that God is righteous. We know that God is merciful. We know that, that God wants to do all these things. And honestly, we, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve to be right. led. We don't deserve to, we don't even deserve to have a perfect Bible here. Uh, so one of my best friends, he believes that we don't deserve any of it. He believes we don't deserve any of it. And because of that, he's caught in Mandela effect. He's caught in all this other crazy stuff. And he believes Satan has the complete control here. The complete control. And then we have no, we have no way to do anything, right? We're all just lost and there's no perfect Bible. There's no nothing, right? But, but God's already done all that because of his nature, right? He likes to preserve, right? He, want, he wants his word to, to last forever, right? He wants you and I to find a way to salvation, a way to repentance, right? That, uh, exactly. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right. But that all should come to repentance, right? And that's why I, I love that, that Christians, we get so caught up on repentance, right? Because, it's, of course, we get caught on the most beautiful thing. That little net comes on us, right? And it's, it's such a beautiful thing, right? Turning from, turning from sin and, and, you know, if, you're, if once you're saved, turning a little more, like, you know, really cleaning house of sin, you know, really repenting of the nitty-gritty, right? But, but when you get saved, right, just, just being willing from, to turn from all the stuff you're looking at, to turn to looking at the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, right? And... and it's just so, it's so beautiful, right? And, and he's doing all these things for his own name's sake, right? For his own name's sake, because that is what God is. That is what God is. He is righteousness. He is a leader. Amen. He is guidance, right? He is salvation, Amen. right? So before he even tells you the things he's going to do for you, he's showing you for thy name's sake. And what is his namesake? His namesake is the sake of leading you, the sake of guiding you, right? The sake of pulling you out of the nets that they have laid privily for you, right? For thou art my strength, right? For thou art my strength. I forget the verse in Isaiah, but he says, uh, 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 the God Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. He has also become my salvation. And that's back to this whole thing. If you, would just, if you would just understand a little bit of who God is, the God of the Bible, if you will understand a little bit of who He is, you'll know where exactly to stand and where exactly to look for support and how exactly to ask for that support. When I stopped praying my own fleshy words and started praying what He says in His Bible, oh man, the comfort came in. I'm not going to say the prayers got answered because some of them did, but, but the comfort came in. The comfort came in. When I stopped saying my own little words, and started praying what, what the psalmist prayed under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When I started doing those little things in my life, oh man, he really became my strength. He became the strength of my tongue, the strength of my lips, the strength to stay down on my knees. Some of you pray on your knees. You know, sometimes when you're down there for a while, your knees get, you, you want to get up. You need to scare, you need to start, the sister's smiling, right? Because she knows, right? If you've been on your knees for very long, you know it starts hurting, Right? But if you're down there and you're in the strength of the Lord, right? If you start getting a little weak and you pray for a little bit of Holy Spirit power, then you start pounding the ground, right? All those little things, your strength, your strength. Let him fill you, right? Let, all for his name's sake. All for his name's strength. Because not only is he a light leader, he's guidance, he's salvation, but he's strength. He's the Lord God Almighty. Amen. No one, not even Satan, can do anything except by his will. Yes, sir. That's right. Except by his will, right? He is the Almighty. My fourth point is you can trust God to love those who fear Him. You can trust God to love those who fear Him. And uh, this was definitely something that I, I kept messing up when we were doing our memory verse for like, uh, we were trying to memorize the whole Psalms 103 chapter. And uh, there's one verse I just kept saying, you know, for those who love God. And everyone's like, no, 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 for those who fear God, right? He's, he's, he gives mercy to those who fear God. And I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I got, got that, got that, got that, you know? And, and right, that's why uh, fear is the beginning of wisdom, right? Because sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to do this. No, 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 he's going to whip my butt. He's going to whip my butt, you know? Like, that, that's where you start making a little bit better choices. Not because not we're smart at all, right? But just because we don't want our butt kicked, you know? Just because, you know, sometimes it's like, Man, I just want to get married already because it's like, you know, as Paul said, it's better, to, it's better to marry than to burn, right? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, I'm going to get my butt spanked, right? I, 
you know, like those little things, right? You got to take it, you got to take it seriously, right? You got to take it very, very seriously, right? And, and heed to every single word, every single word a, a, as you're reading it, right? And, and it's, uh, I, I, sometimes, sometimes it's better to just maybe just read one chapter a day, right? If you're not good at paying attention to every little word. I know this is a bit of a tangent, right? But wow. this is just a piece that, hel that helped me, right? As I was, as I was learning these things. Sometimes if you're not heeding to every word, stop with the whole five, six chapters, whatever pages, whatever, and just read a few verses, right? But stick on every single word and every single thing, right? Every, everything matters, right? If we believe in a perfect Bible, then we believe he put everything in there for purpose, right? When, when, the, brother, when the brother told me, hey, you know, uh, colons point to the next sentence, you know? Semicolons, you know, the focus is on the first part. You know, the second part is independent. I'm like, oh, yeah, basic literary tools. Yeah, of course, you know, right? You use the other things that, that, the, that the Lord has showed you in your life, right? The other little things that he's put in your life and apply them back to the word, right? And ta that's just taking it a little more serious. I know it's a bit of a tangent, but it's just something I thought I'd throw out there, right? So, so verse 19, right? Uh, turn with me to Psalms 31, verse 19. And the word of God says, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Right, did you catch that? Right, thou hast laid up for them that fear him. Right, so not only can you trust him now, right, because the trust is established, right? He's trusted you, he showed you he's going to defend you, but now you got to fear him, right? Now you got to fear him. Now, Right, so so we talked about earlier, right? As Christians, we always find a way out of that fortress, right? We always find a way out of the defense that He's already laid for us, right? But now, when you get to that gate and you're like, ah, my friends are gonna hit the bar. I know I don't have to drink, right? Because I'm not a sinner, right? But uh, you know, but I, I could just venture out a little bit, right? Now you gotta remember, oh man. But if I step out. Oh, man, maybe the Lord's up there with the bow, like, man, this idiot, I'm going to just strike him down before he does something dumb, you know? And, you know, like, you got, you got to fear him, right? You got to, yeah, it's a healthy fear. It's a healthy fear. He did not give us the, the, the spirit of fear, right? But, but still, you got to just have that little bit of fear, right, to just watch that next, that next foot, right? Watch that next, watch that next word that comes out of your mouth, right? And, and it's all about fearing him rather than fearing uh, the trust in thee before the sons of men, right? And sometimes your friends say, you know, oh, yeah, come, come out with us, come out with us, you know, like, oh, we're not going to peer pressure you. No, trust me, trust me, we're not going to peer pressure you. How many times has that failed? I don't know about y'all, but I know that's, that's failed me a whole bunch of times. I get there, and maybe they don't, but uh, someone else that just gets there, oh, come on, take a shot, don't be a sissy, come on, man, come on, man, you know, like, it, 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 like, if you trust in them before you trust in God, right, then there's something going on there, right? And that, that is grounds for us as a Christian to get some chastisement, right? That is grounds for us to get our butt whooped a little bit, right? And, and so doctrinally, I know here uh, in, in verse 19, right, uh, he, he's speaking more, um, you know, not really uh, more so about us. But uh, if you were to cross-reference this with Lamentations 5.22, uh, this goes uh, into uh, Israel at the end of the tribulation. It's a prophetic statement saying, you know, uh, that, he is, uh, uh, that he has done those. And that's, that's here in verse 20, right? So 19 and 20 are in a pair. But uh, verse 20, that's speaking more about uh, Israel, you know, going through the uh, end of the tribulation and, and getting the blessing there uh, at the end. But, um, you know, having that doctrinal um, knowledge, right, and that historical knowledge a little bit can help us apply it a little more practically, right, a little more practically for us. Because, uh, you know, even, even when we're going through uh, the hard times, uh, we still know that the Lord is there. Shall we fear Him, right? He's there to help us. And look here in verse 22, right? For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee, right? Right, so you fear God, right? You fear God, you trust Him already. So, right, what, what, is, what is David said in, in, in verse, verse 2, 3, right? Uh, uh, bow down thine ear, bow down thine ear, right? Tell Him everything you're, you're thinking about. Lord, uh, I come to you in all reverence, right? But truthfully, I was thinking about going out with that girl. I was thinking about 
taking a shower with my friends, you know, tell them every little thing, right? Tell them every little thing, right? Forgive me for my thing, right? Forgive me for, for my weakness, right? Or, or, or maybe, you, maybe you do go out, right? And that's where verse 22 comes out. Maybe you do fear the sons of men a little bit more, right? And you do go out and you do commit those sins, right? That, this is where it really gets, this is where it gets the most important for us Christians, right? Because I understand, be thou, you know, be thou holy, for I am holy, right? But, but right, we're going we're gonna to sin, right? We're going to sin, right? So it's about what you do after you sin, right? Are you going to come home and get discouraged and just sit there and whine about it, right? Or are you going to look right back up to Calvary and say, oh, yeah, whatever. I know, I know that if I say these little discouraged words, but I look right back up to you as I'm praying to you, that you're going to strengthen me, yes. right? Because this is exactly what he's saying here. In my haste, I had said you, you would cut me off. But even then, you were still listening to me. You were still listening to everything I was saying. So skip the tears. Skip the tears and trust the word. Skip the little things. Maybe tell him what you're feeling. But no, he is listening. We do not have to hear, worry about him not hearing us. The Holy Spirit is sealed inside of you if you are saved. He has already committed spiritual circumcision. Your soul is safe. Know these things. Understand these things. Quit the sniveling. Quit the sniveling and look for the blessings of it. Keep your eye on him even when you're sinning. Even when you're sinning. That's the hardest thing when you're driving to sin. When you're driving to sin to turn off the preaching, don't turn it off. Keep it going. Get the conviction going. That's what I'm talking about. We got to keep it going. Minimize the sin. If we're going to sin, minimize it. Nip it in the bud. Nip it in the bud, you know. That's what I'm talking about. Like, and so I understand, right, doctrinally, right, it's not, it might not be the appliances, but do you see how I'm saying, right, the tribulation, right? And I went into all of that because, right, how that, was a, that was nothing compared to what the Jews and what the, the rest of the lost world is going to be going through in the tribulation, right? They're not going to be driving to sin. They're going to be getting people round up and getting people's heads cut off. They're going to be getting forced to get chips in their hands, all this crazy stuff, right? They're going to be really going through hell on earth. Hell on earth until God comes down in the millennium and puts an actual hell on earth, right? But they're going to be going through some wicked stuff here, right? And having a little bit of that historical and that doctrinal knowledge, right? Knowing and trusting your word of God, right? Having a little bit of knowledge, right? Makes the practical application a little bit more. Right? Do you see what I'm getting at here, right? If you'll just read your Bible a little bit more on your own free time, right? And the things that you're doing, right? When you come to church and you hear the preaching of, uh, from the pastor, right? I understand pastors are much better preacher than we are, right? But when you hear his preaching, right? If you'll, if you'll take heed to the little, the little gifts we're trying to give to you, right? If you'll take heed to some of these things and understand your Bible a little more, oh man, the meat's going to taste so much better. Good, the meat's going to taste so much better if you just have a little bit of that milk. If you just have a little bit of that milk and you got your teeth growing in now, right? You're no longer a babe. Now you're a little child, right? The, right? Little children, right? That's the next stage after babe. You go from babe to a little, chill, a little child, right? You get your teeth come in. You could chew the meat so much better. And it all tastes so much better. And that's, that's exactly what I was trying to give you an example of there, right? The doctrinal application is beautiful, right? But, but we, need, we need the practicality because because it, it, it may not be that hard, but it's a hard word. The desires are hard. You know, we need a little bit of help here, right? And the Lord gives it there. But once again, we got we to gotta know his word and understand it to be able to get that help, to get that help from him, right? And we got to fear him to get more trust in there, right? And so, right, um, verse 23, right? Verse 23 here. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful. And plentifully rewardeth the doer, the proud doer, right? So when I first thought, when I first read this, I thought both of us were, both of those groups were us. Then I really thought about it. I was like, wait, a proud look is an abomination of God. I was like, I don't think that second group's us. And then so, so some little more studying, right? I, I was able to determine who that second group is, right? Before we go to the second group, right? Look at the, look at the first part here, right? Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, right? Us, all ye his saints, right? I'm sure maybe it's not talking to us, but for the sake of the conversation here, all ye his saints, us, right? For the Lord preserveth 
the faithful, right? If you stick to preserve, you know, to faithfully reading your Bible, to faithfully coming to church, to faithfully going to soul winning, right? He will preserve you just as he preserved his word that ye may even have salvation in the first place because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He preserved these that you could even have the path, but a step further then if you will just, you know, put a little bit of the work in, he will preserve you and then not only will he preserve you but he actually sends his holy spirit into you and preserves you preserves your soul you know like it's so beautiful right and the god the lord is just constantly preserving constantly preserving these things right the good things at least right constantly preserving these good things right and, and, and love the lord for it love the lord for it maybe at the end of your little sniveling your little groveling to the lord after you after you've just done these things just fire off some things you're loving for. Fire off some things you're thankful for, right? Sometimes we forget that stuff, right? Uh, prayers for, for and all things and thanksgiving. And thanksgiving, giving of thanks, right? Just tell them some things. Or maybe even, maybe you don't, maybe you, maybe on the way to go to commit that sin and you know you're going to fall into it. Just fire off some things you're thankful for. Get some points. You know he's going to whoop your butt. Get some points in, you know? You do it with your boss. You do it with your friends. You do it with other people. Why can't you do it with God? I'm not saying I approve of that, but I'm saying you'll do it for other people. Do it for God. Do it for the one who saved you. I'm going to do something bad. To, I'm going to do something bad tonight, Lord. But hey, thanks for this. And thanks for salvation. And thanks for even bowing down your ear to hearing a worthless sinner like me right now. Thanks for being in this room, right? Giving those little things, right? Just get, you'll do it for other people. Do it for him. Do it for him. Show him those same courtesies, right? And then <laughs> plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Who is the proud doer? That wicked one. All those people laying the nets for you, right? God's going to get that revenge. He's going to reward them with hell. And I'm not saying we should pray for that because by no means should we wish hell on anyone. It's going to be horrible. But for the people that have been messing with you and most importantly, that wicked one, the serpent who's been messing with all of us, our ancestors, every single person since the very beginning, if we will be his saints, then we will get front row seats to watch that wicked one bow and say, yes, I confess Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Right. So not only will we get a little bit of preservation, a little bit of assurance here while we're on earth, but we will get to see the rewards given to that wicked one. After we get our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, when we've gotten our little bit of gold, when we've gotten our crown, imagine how wonderful it's going to be when you're wearing your crown and Satan's kneeling huh? after he's been laughing because you've been doing all this stupid stuff. Right? How beautiful it's going to be. You're going to have your crown. You're buying your bags of gold. And he's going to be kneeling after you shed your tears for your loved ones you didn't pray, you didn't lead to salvation, you didn't give the gospel to. After you shed all those tears, you're going to get to see him reward the proud doer. I know this life is hard. I know we're not going to be perfect. But stick through, beloved. Stick through, and there are rewards, bountiful rewards. The proud doers are going to get rewarded, and you could trust that. You could trust that God's going to reward them what they need. And uh, last year, be of good courage, verse 24. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So, coming from a Catholic standpoint, right? all this working and stuff, you never got courage in nothing, you never got, right? But when you get saved, truthfully, right, you can have the courage to walk into that throne room. You can have the courage to know you're going to go commit something wrong and still say, hey, Lord, hey, hey, God, who just created everything, who made the stars also, who, you know, did all these wonderful things that I take for granted, hey, uh, Thanks for this, you know, or I'll confess to you tonight, right? You could have that little bit of courage, right? Because you have a lawyer up there, right? So when you walk into that courtroom, when you walk into that courtroom in shackles, 
maybe a little bit of filth on you, right? Because we haven't gotten our white raiment yet, right? <laughs> we haven't gotten our white raiment yet, but you got a little bit of filth on you, and you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go commit this, right? Because, you know, the Spirit maketh groanings, which cannot be uttered, right? And so I'm sure the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, this guy's going to go do it. He's going to go, you know, he's snitching on you out there, right? And, but, but your lawyer's right there like, oh, but look at these. Look at these holes. Look at these holes in my hands. Look at this. Look at this cut in my rib, right? Right? Look at this. And God the Father is like, oh, yeah. I remember that. I remember that. And once again, it comes down to one of those things. If you just know your Bible a little bit, right, you can have more courage to do these things that we need to be doing as Christians, the things that are hard for us to do as Christians, the looking unto Jesus, the staying in the fort, the doing all these little things. If you'll just read your Bible a little bit more, you can have even more courage because not only does he tell you in verses like this, in verses like Joshua 1 9, to have courage, to be, you know, that he will give you success as Joshua 1 8, right? A, a prosperous success, if I remember correctly, right? A prosperous success, not just success, right? But, <laughs> you know, but, you know, you can have more courage if you'll just stick to the word. And as Psalms 34 8 says, right? Oh, taste and know that the Lord is gracious, right? That way you can do that. Trust fall back onto the Lord, right? Because that's all He asks. You don't, gotta, you don't even got to walk to the spot where you're going to do the trust fall at. He's going to get you there, right? Because the Holy Spirit's going to lead it upon you. Maybe you have someone walking near you trying to give you the gospel and all that. I understand that, right? But he, the Lord's going to get you there. And when you get to that cliff with uh, Jesus Christ right down under you, like, shh, shh, you know, and the Holy Spirit's like, okay, just fall back. Just fall back. You know, just cross your arms, close your eyes, and, and fall back. So if you don't have the strength or the courage today, I trust that you have honored everything I've shown you out of the Word of God. I trust that you have looked at the Word of God as I was telling you the verses and uh, expounding on them a little bit. Uh, let God be true in every man a liar. So I pray that uh, the verses themselves also uh, spoke what I was trying to convey to you. And if all of that did work on you, I ask you now to bow your head, close your eyes, and... Uh, fall back onto Jesus Christ. If uh, you're not saved, I pray that uh, you will uh, be led unto Jesus Christ for salvation. Um, if you are saved, I pray that you'll take the next step and uh, casting all your cares and anxieties onto Him. Uh, this is a, a verse that I usually read during altar call. And I'll read it now for you while you're praying. Uh, this is uh, Matthew 11:25. And the Bible says, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is light, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church, as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth in Bible-believing truth until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. 
As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that He can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what He did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, Pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.